Hi, today I want to talk to you about an ethical dilemma called growth attenuation. First, I want to define a pillow angel, which is an affectionate term given to Ashley X um, by her parents. It's now generalized to people with severe cognitive and mental de developmental impairment and physical limitations that prevent them from walking, talking, or eating, requiring total dependence on a caregiver. There's a collection of medical procedures intended to enhance the quality of life of pillow angels called the Ashley treatment. It requires um, growth attenuation with high dose estrogen therapy, avoid menstruation and cramps with a hysterectomy, and limit growth of breasts, including breastfed removal. To determine if the treatment was ethical or practical, we want to look at autonomy, her respect for bodily integrity and self determination, beneficence, doing good, and non maleficence, avoiding harm. We want to uh, use the moral ethical decision-making model, M-O-R-A-L, want to manage the dilemma, outline the options, resolve the dilemma, act by applying the chosen option, and look back and evaluate. To manage the dilemma, we need to look at the controversial abuse of the treatment. Was it out of convenience or compassion? Should she be institutionalized or kept home with her family? Um, deal with boredom and discomfort or increase her quality of life to participate in family outings? And looking at outline of the options, there's growth, menses, and her breast concerns. With growth, they can administer high-dose estrogen to hasten puberty and growth plate maturation, or they can do nothing. With her menses, they can um, perform a hysterectomy and remove her uterus, enhancing the ability to provide better skin care and eliminate the need for yearly pap smears by removing her cervix, or do nothing, which would increase the risk of skin breakdown, increase hygiene concerns due to immobility, and um, she would require yearly pap smears once her menses begin. She's also unable to um, communicate any kind of discomfort, so treating and ass assessing and treating cramps in this nonverbal female would be very difficult. With her breast concerns, they can remove the breast buds to decrease complications associated with large fibrocystic breast typical in her family, increase the ability to sit in the wheelchair with a chest strap comfortably, or do nothing. If she were to have a breast reduction later in life, there's a higher risk of complications. To resolve the dilemma, the parents reviewed all options with the Ethics Committee at Seattle Children's Hospital, in which it was a group consisting of 40 individuals with multidisciplinary background. Ashley cannot display autonomy, so her parents must apply beneficence and non maleficence. Washington law prohibits sterilization of a disabled minor. An attorney that they sought counsel from um, specializing in disability law advised the family the law did not apply to Ashley since voluntary reproduction was impossible due to her cognitive limitation. They argued that sterilization was merely a side effect of her hysterectomy, which was actually um, the true intent was to stop her menses, and the intent was not the sterilization. Uh, the law did apply to her. The, the attorney was wrong. This um, ethical dilemma should have gone before a court of law with a decision from a judge protecting Ashley's rights. In conclusion, what they essentially did was modify Ashley to fit the home instead of the home to fit Ashley. They were able to achieve growth attenuation by stopping her height at 4 foot 5 inches instead of 5 foot 4 anticipated growth and her weight at 70 pounds instead of 125, which was anticipated. What can we do as nurses? We can teach, advocate, and support. We need to recognize the family as an integral part of the child's life. Support the family in their efforts to remain intact. Accept that they know their child and want what's best for them. Remember there's no handbook for parenting. Remember that they um, recognize when they're overwhelmed and need a break, and also recognize their need for autonomy. Be open to discussion of treatment options, even those that are controversial, and build trust with patients and families so they will confide in you. Thank you.